Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. I'm sorry I haven't recorded in a while, but I have a new job. Before I was teaching chemistry at university, but now I am the token chemist at the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory. Uh, now you might think there isn't a whole lot of chemistry going on at a part of the physics lab, and you would be right, but there is some, and it's my job to understand it so the physicists don't have to. Uh, now, particle physics and neutrinos is somewhat outside my usual purview of everyday science, but this job is just way too cool not to talk about. First off, what is a neutrino? Eh, I'm a chemist. Even the physicists aren't entirely sure. What we do know is that it's matter, not energy, but it's not found on the periodic table. It's not made of the same types of things that go into the protons and neutrons and electrons that make up what we usually consider matter, like this, or like this. Uh, it's a byproduct of nuclear reactions, so whenever an atom decays or falls apart, a neutrino is produced in the wreckage. It has the distinction of being one of the first particles whose existence was predicted before it was discovered. Physicist Wolfgang Pauli basically just made it up to make some equation balance, and then felt bad about what he'd done, because in those days you weren't allowed to just invent things. Uh, nowadays, particle physicists will invent a new particle whenever they feel like. Anyway, this was in 1930, and it wasn't detected until 1956. It has almost no mass, and barely interacts with normal matter, what makes, which makes it really hard to see when your detectors are made of normal matter. The detector in the Sudbury Neutrino Observatory, or SNOW, is a giant plastic bubble located two kilometers underground in a nickel mine. It's that far down because neutrinos aren't the only weird exotic subatomic particles these detectors can see. However, they are the only things that can penetrate two kilometers of solid rock, so having a detector that deep eliminates a lot of the interference. You also have to go to absurd lengths to keep everything clean, because there's trace radioactivity in absolutely everything, including you. Don't worry, that's normal. Everything that goes into the lab gets thoroughly washed to remove dust, and dirt, and grease, and whatnot. Anything that might contribute unwanted neutrinos. Anyway, the reason this detector is useful is because while the neutrino almost never interacts with normal matter, that's not the same as absolutely never. It's that almost that makes it feasible. If the neutrino never interacted, we'd never ever see it. Something like a gazillion neutrinos just passed through the Earth. One of those gazillion hit an electron in one of the atoms making up the planet. That's the principle behind the snow detector. One neutrino in a gazillion comes along, smacks into an electron in the detector, and runs off screaming into the night. Before it leaves, it dumps a whole pile of kinetic energy onto that poor electron. Neutrinos travel just under the speed of light, so there's a lot of kinetic energy to spread around. That electron then needs to do something with all that energy, and it does that by recoiling. It's like if somebody came up to you and smacked you in the face. Man, that's violent. It's like if your friend came up to you and gave you a hearty slap on the back, because apparently that's what friends do. If your friend was a weightlifter, you might stagger a few steps and then straighten up and stand up again. That's what the electron does when it recoils. It dumps all of that energy off in the form of high-energy radiation. And the detector is filled with a fluid called a scintillator. So when that high-energy radiation hits it, it, uh, it gives off light. And it's those flashes of light that tell us we've detected a neutrino. Getting to work is a bit of an adventure. The observatory is located in a working nickel mine, and we need to work around their operations. There's an elevator for us that goes down at 6 o'clock in the morning, so we have to be there ready to go in coveralls and hard hat and miner's boots. The elevator goes down pretty fast, but it's still about a 5 or 10 minute descent in pitch blackness. Once we get to our level, it's a half hour hike through the mine. By this point, it's been 30 to 45 minutes since the workday began, and we're still not even at the workplace yet. Remember I said we go to observe lengths to clean everything? That includes people. Before you go in, you and all of your same gender co-workers strip naked and have a shower. And then you put on stylish blue jumpsuits and steel-toed boots. 
I gotta say, it makes for a really weird job interview. I really wish I had a video to show you, but cameras aren't allowed on the mine site without special permission. Plus, I don't own a video camera. I'll put links to Snow Lab's own virtual tour and videos in the description. And if there's enough support for it, I may start uh, crowdfunding for a video camera. Within the lab itself, there are a bunch of other experiments, mostly looking for dark matter. But the heart of the facility is the neutrino detector. It's an acrylic sphere 12 meters across. In the original experiments, it was filled with heavy water. But in the next phase, it will be filled with this organic scintillator. Right now, it's full of air because we're still in the process of getting the thing up and running. Uh, the sphere is surrounded by thousands of photo detectors to record the light flashes. And the whole thing sits in a cavern that eventually will be filled with water to act as extra shielding. It's about half full right now. And they use an inflatable boat to, take, uh, to paddle around and inspect the photo detectors. I've been told that I need to take an underground boat ride just so I can say I've taken an underground boat ride. Generally people work a 10 hour shift four days a week, which if you take off the time involved of hiking to the mine and back again works out to about eight hours. It feels like longer though. Um, the pressure is higher and right now when I go down there I'm doing somewhat physical work. So you get tired in a hurry and surprisingly hungry. It's worth it though. We're probing the secrets of the universe down there. I've got a year on my contract and there is always the possibility of an extension. Maybe I'll be able to make an actual video tour sometime in the future. Until then, thanks for watching. I've been Steve.